Hello, hello, and welcome once again to a Beatles show that is called Things We Said Today. This is a weekly program that focuses on what's going on in the news with the Beatles. I'm Ken Michaels, one of the co-hosts of the show. You know me best for my syndicated Beatles show called Every Little Thing. And I'm being joined by my co-host who writes for Beatles Examiner and a million other, and I do mean million, other Examiner columns. It's a wonder he has time to talk to us. And that being Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Hello, everyone. On today's program, uh, we've got a little treat for you here. Uh, as many of you know, Mark Lewison is coming out with a brand new Beatles biography. And for those of you who are not familiar with who Mark Lewison is, well, you know, he's someone who has done incredible work on the Beatles. He's best known for having authored a number of Beatle books, The Beatles Live, which documented all the live performances the Beatles performed at, all their gigs going back to the Quarrymen days through the last show at Candlestick Park. And he's probably best known for the next book called The Beatles Recording Sessions, which documents everything the Beatles did at EMI Studios. And uh, he followed that up with another amazing book called The Complete Beatles Chronicle, which kind of combined the works of The Beatles Live, The Beatles Recording Sessions, and added to that uh, their TV appearances, their radio appearances, what they did on BBC Radio, uh, their work in films, everything The Beatles did as a chronology, and uh, it was, in every sense of the word, complete. And his work has been just um, impeccable. And uh, I, think you, I think you could say he's probably the premier Beatles author. Um, he's the one that everybody looks up to um, for, you know, the the quality of the work and and just what he's done. I mean, that Recording Sessions book should be, if it isn't already, on everybody's bookshelf because it's, it's, you know, it's absolutely necessary. For all the people that wanted to know day by day what the Beatles did in the studio, that's what that book is. How many mm-hmm. takes of every song, when they recorded it all the different work they put into their songs. You know, it's all covered there in the uh, the Beatles recording sessions. Well, I was going to say, he was given unprecedented access to the unreleased songs, and he got to, you know, and as part of doing the research, he got to hear all that stuff. So that's what made the, that book so incredibly wonderful. Apart from being wonderful, he was the envy of many Beatles fans around the world. That's true. But he's been working on something entirely new, and it's a Beatles biography. And it's going to be called All These Years. It's coming out in three volumes, the first of which comes out in the United States. The exact date that he gave me was October the 29th. And uh, that book, uh, all three books are going to be the most comprehensive biography on the Beatles. And he told me the first book will be a 1,000 pages long, and that's the edited version because there's an author's cut, which even, you know, you were reporting about, Steve, that's mm-hmm. uh, 2,000 pages long that initially will only be available in the U.K., but these days you can order everything online. Right. You can still get it anyway. But I just recently interviewed Mark Lewis, and, and it was uh, nothing short of a joy. He's, I've interviewed him a few times now. He's very easy to talk to. And um, he told me what the whole basis was behind writing this book. And just for the first volume alone, as we're about to learn, it's already 10 years he's been working on this. And, uh, you know, when you talk about Mark, you're talking about someone that really set the standard. He cares a lot about all the information that he offers, that it's as accurate as can be. He does painstaking research. And... You know, as you're as you're about to learn in this interview that I'm about to play for you, you know, he's very lucky that he got to work with a, a publisher that gave him all the time that he needed to make sure that this book was done right without the stress of having to deal with a deadline. But um, I thought what I would do is uh, play this clip of the interview that I just did with Mark, and hopefully when the book comes out in October... We will interview Mark, either together or privately, or we don't know for sure, but certainly when the book comes out, there'll be more interviews that you'll be hearing from Mark Lewis, and because there's so many things, believe it or not, that we don't know still about the Beatles. As I said, I've interviewed him a few times, and I tell you, I just, I, I think so highly of him for so many reasons, but what I came, what I came across from 
doing this interview is that his love and his passion and his fascination with the Beatles is only stronger now than it's ever been. And he's been doing research on the Beatles for over 30 years. So um, he's someone that we should all admire. And for someone who's trying to put out the best biography there could be on the Beatles, I think that uh, it's worth our attention to hear him talk about this brand new project that he's been working on. So let's give a listen to some of my interview with Mark Lewison. We're going to start with a very obvious question to ask you since you are writing the Beatles biography and by all means it's supposed to be the most comprehensive biography on the Beatles. Why the need for another Beatles biography? Well, I don't know how many Beatles books you have in your library, quite a lot I would imagine. I certainly have several hundred, I don't know exactly how many, maybe 500. There aren't actually though that many biographies. It's still a field that is dominated by Hunter Davis and Philip, Norm Philip Norman. Hmm. Uh, and many people seem to think that Philip Norman's book is the best. Shout! It came yes, out in 1981. It's that's already in itself over 30 years ago. Uh, and the Hunter Davis book, of course, came out in the 60s, 1968. So that that's really been around nearly 50 years now. Right. We now know a lot more than we knew in those days. There's more knowledge, more information. Um, but more to the point, I just felt that I didn't really want to go to my grave knowing that those books were being held up as the standard word on the Beatles when I knew they could be done so much better. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful to Hunter Davis or Philip Norman, but I just felt that you know those, those could not be the best biographies of the Beatles. Uh, there have been one or two others, but hmm. they're not generally considered to be as good as Davis and Norman. So I also felt that you can't really do this story in one book, not if you're trying to tell the complete biography, the complete history, because one book by its very definition is limited to at the very most probably a thousand pages. Um, most biographies are a lot smaller than that. And mm -hmm. I just thought that if you try and cram the Beatles story into a book of that size, you have to leave far too much out that is actually necessary, that it's important, that it's there. And so I just thought this story needs to be done properly. Every day one sees in the media ridiculously bad, wrong, stupid things being written about the Beatles. And I just felt that this story is getting more wrong with every passing year and someone needs to put the flag down and say, actually, to the best of our knowledge, this is what happened. And uh, so I decided I would do it. Well, I applaud you so much for that because <laughs> I've seen so much inaccuracies in Beatle books. Mm. Um, what about the Beatles anthology? What about for people who think, well, it's the Beatles in their own words, you can't get any better than that? Well, you can't, um, in the sense of th that being the first person book. I mean, the anthology is a major contribution to Beatles knowledge. And uh, I'm really glad that they did it, and I'm very glad that we have it. But it isn't the complete story, because it's only the story, by definition, it is their story as they remembered it. Mm -hmm. um, which, And they remembered it fairly well, in fact, very well, but not perfectly well and of course there's plenty of topics that it doesn't cover at all and what it certainly doesn't cover is the Beatles from an objective point of view it's very much a subjective book so it's a, it's a great contribution to our knowledge but again it isn't the be all and end all book and I wanted to write I feel that the world needs and I need to write the be all and end all book um, a book that will stand the test of time a book that is demonstrably accurate a book that is has everything properly attributed, a book that really revels in its in its sources, uh, a book that tells you a lot of things you don't know, and absolutely establishes the truth of what you know the kind of things that we do know but haven't necessarily read in the right order or in the right context or properly revealed and explained. It's a truly tremendously exciting story, and the more it gets told decade after decade, it's now 50 years, the more it gets kind of squashed flat. Mm -hmm. And I want to pump oxygen back into this story. I want to, I want it to be up and breathing and being really exciting again, because it was phenomenally exciting. Just as someone who's been doing a lot of Beatle programs now for 30 years, one of the problems that I always face is that anytime I want to offer information, and I find something in a book, and it conflicts with something that the Beatles have said, yeah. how do you know what is the accurate information? Yes. Well, 
inevitably when you're writing a biography or history you're going to get conflicting points of view but this is my subject you know I've mm -hmm. been I've been a, a Beatles historian now for 30 odd years uh, it's all I do I don't have a day job I am a Beatles historian <laughs> it's uh, not a bad job <laughs> no it's it's the best <laughs> want to um, trade <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, and I work I, I mean it really is a long day job I work very long hours all the time at this yeah um, but you get a very strong sense of what's right and what isn't right and what's believable and what isn't believable but every once in a while inevitably you're going to come up with a situation where two or three people each categorically their account of it is, is categoric but, but contradictory and in such instances it's not really for me to decide I can perhaps tilt the, the, the writing one way or the other but I actually put all the conflicting versions in that's kind of the way to do it because one of the things that I admire about your work is that you don't taint it with your opinion yes yes I really I'm, I'm, I'm not in this book all I'm doing is 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 weaving it together and the knowledge on the Beatles is tremendously deep and again without wishing to sound dismissive of them the likes of Hunter Davis and Philip Norman and so on they're not interested in the deeper levels of information they have a, a project in mind they, I'm gonna write a book on the Beatles I'm gonna give it two years hmm. they do six seven eight months of research six seven eight months of writing it goes into production it comes out right you can't do that with the Beatles there's far too much to know and to and to learn uh, I mean, stuff is coming up all the time that needs to be processed. There are so many levels of information, and the, no matter how deep some of those levels are, they're still interesting, they're still relevant, and all that needs to be assessed. Well, you can't do that in a year or two. This first volume has taken 10 years. Wow. Um, and so got, you weren't given any deadline at all? When I signed the contracts for these books, we had to put a date down. Uh, and it was it was a fairly arbitrary thing but I, I had a feeling it could be done in about four or five years so that I started the project in 2003 hmm. the contract had delivery is 2007 with publication in 2008 but in 2007 I hadn't even started writing yet I was still doing the research hmm. and that was on top of a lifetime of other research because right. I've been researching this since the 70s and I was still finding good stuff out, still meeting people who had never been interviewed before, who told fantastic things. And I just thought, the, the very nature of this project is we're cutting no corners. This will never be done as thoroughly. It's never been done this thoroughly before. It won't be done this thoroughly again because the people won't be around to be involved in it anymore. And so let's not cut any corners. And the publishers understood that. That's what they bought into. So I told them then I was going to be late and they accepted that. And then it took a very long time to write. It took about, it took just over three years to write every day. Mm -hmm. So again, that, that pushed the deadline further and further back. We, we, we didn't exactly make announcements, but we would say every once in a while, or I would say, I hope to get it out in 2011, but it would pass. And um, it just took as long as it needed to take. That's as simple as it is. I mean, the great thing about this is that most projects do have that commercial imperative where you've got to meet this deadline and it's got to be out for that anniversary but the publishers understood with this that that isn't what it's about it's about just doing it properly and when you finished it then we'll publish it you found the right publisher <laughs> I did I did yeah this was Crown Crown in the US yes. and Little Brown in the UK uh, and they've both been fantastically patient um, and volumes two and three are still to go but they won't take as long they will take they won't be quick, but they won't take as long as this one took. Hmm. I mean, this one covers a very broad span of time, and the next two have a, a much narrower focus in terms of the years that they cover. The, the, the story has been written chronologically, and this first volume goes up to the end of 1962. What interests me the most, I and mean, you've partially answered this anyway, is, is there anything that you've uncovered that conflicts with the way the Beatles have told their own story? And, you know, there are some people who believe no matter what, you got to go by what they say. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows better than them? Yes. Well, that's true to a certain extent. I mean, they, their line is always, which I understand, there were only four of us in the car. Right. Or four of us in the van or whatever it might be. And I, res I understand exactly why they say that and I respect it. But actually, there are times when there were others in the van as well uh -huh. and in the car. And I've got some of those people and you really are right in there with them. But more to the point is that because there were just the four of them, they know 
they have a level of knowledge such as it might still exist which we can't know mm -hmm. because it is truly private to them and that's fair enough and I, in fact that's right that's that's the way it should be but there's also a, a whole many many other dimensions to their story that they don't know about at all i mean they don't know for example how they got a recording contract to this day they'll they'll find out when they read the book i'm not going to tell you either but it's in the book Okay, there's more to it than we've we've heard all this time. Yes, beyond the the uh, audition with George Martin. Yes, there was no audition for George Martin, but beyond that, I'm not going to say anything more. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, I mean, there have been so many uncertain factors about the Beatles in in terms of the, the early part of their story. Just com just thing. To, it, it's just never been told properly before. It's as simple as that. It really hasn't been told properly before, and it needs to be told properly while we have the opportunity to do it. And that's it. That's my clip right there of my interview with Mark Lewison. What do you think, Steve? I've been sitting here, chomping at the bit, waiting to re respond, because there's so many things in there to get excited about. I mean, it's it's incredible. I think, mm -hmm. I mean, if if you were to put up a wish list of the definitive Beatles biography, he practically has it covered. Number one, it's Mark Lewison doing it. And right. I think... If you were to name one person, you know, put down names, I mean, everybody, uh, you know, I, I I have to say that Philip Norman's Shout thrilled me to no end when it came out. I loved that book then. I still love it. I know it's been criticized for some of the stuff that's been, that that was said in it, but I, I still love that book. I love Hunter Davies' book, too. You know, I also, also have a I'll have a like, and I, I, I know a lot of people don't, for Robert Spitz's book, too, but... Mark is doing everything that you could possibly ask. Number one, he's uh, if you get the the author's cut, he's not going to. It's going to be unedited, basically unedited. It's going to be two thousand pages mm -hmm. for that first volume alone, which is in, which is incredible. The the one thing though that really caught my ear as a as a uh, you know a, as a someone who's been involved in journalism is he's using all perspectives. He's not going to. He's not going to interpret anything. He's going to put all points of views in there, and that's fantastic. That you know, I think probably there may be some people who kind of wish that he would put some perspective on it. But the fact that he's including you know all points of views and all perspectives is is just excellent. He's not cutting any corner corners, and the fact that it's been delayed over and over and over again, and people have you know have commented, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Well, obviously, he's working on doing it right and that's you know you couldn't ask for anything more you know the fact that uh the the little tidbit he dropped about the beatles not auditioning for george martin is absolutely mind-blowing that's astounding uh -huh. i i can't imagine you know that, that in an in and of itself makes you wonder what what does he have what other things does he have you know that, that we don't know about yeah. so it's going to be interesting to see uh, from that perspective what he has but I think the most interesting thing like I said is the fact that he's not going to interpret the book and you know not putting and he was very careful not to to put down Hunter Davies to put down uh, Philip Norman to put down anybody else but he's obviously committed and he has been in it every time you know, everything I've written about it so far uh, and, you know, every comment we've seen so far that he's going to do this the way it should be done. And that's, you know, you couldn't ask for anything else. I mean, if, if, like I said, if there's a, a, a wish list, a Beale fan's wish list of the definitive biography, he's got it covered. It's really kind of amazing. Yeah. And um, the thing I admire so much about him amongst many things is that he has such a professional attitude about him just mm -hmm. the fact that he wants to do everything right and like you just commented and I said to him he doesn't taint his books with opinion he just presents the facts or he throws all the different um, angles of every story out there and I guess in his own way he lets you interpret which is kind of the way to go I mean we mentioned Philip Norman shout and that's not a book that I'm crazy about I got to be mm -hmm. honest with you, because it shows a bias towards John in that book, and 
you know, I've never felt in any of the work that Mark has done and in any of the conversations I've had with him or anything I've read about him that he shows any particular bias at all. He just wants to present the story as fairly and as honestly as possible. And as he just said, there's no deadline here. So talk about a dream job to do to do the Beatles biography and to do it right and uh, to gather as much information as you possibly can and to interview as many people, many of whom have never been interviewed before or have hardly been interviewed, to get every perspective that you can. And he wants to tackle, you know, every angle of the Beatles' history. He was telling me, and I, I think that, um, I have to remember if this is part of my entire interview, but he wanted to discuss what the record industry was like in England before the Beatles hit it big, to understand, you know, why they changed things. Mm-hmm. Something it'll like be, that. It'll, it'll be interesting to see on... Uh, on um, things like the, the firing of Pete Best, uh-huh. how he handles those incidents. That's going to be it, that's going to be one in particular that's going to be, you know, really uh, something to see. Because, well, he he did uh, tell me that that issue that will be completely resolved in this book. Well, again, it's going to be interesting to see how it is resolved. You know, not and not just the fact that it is resolved. But how he takes what you know the information that he has, and uh, you know, and and uses that. Did he tell you, or did you ask him if they have been involved personally in the book? The Beatles themselves. Mm-hmm. He did not interview any of the Beatles specifically for this book, but he did tell me that over the course of time, and he's done a lot of work for Paul in particular. He's right. interviewed Paul. He he told me fifteen times. In the past, so some of those interviews are being used for this book. It wasn't okay. he didn't do those interviews with that intention, but if there's any information in there where it applies, he puts it in there. Right. So he didn't tell me anything about contacting Ringo, but he did say, well, he didn't contact them, so that includes Ringo for this book. Right. right. But there's so many other people around them to talk to, and and like we just said, a lot of people who haven't been interviewed before or have rarely been interviewed who can shed a lot of insight on their story and things that we've never heard before. Well, on the other hand, too, I mean, you get Beatle books that don't contact, you know, that use outsiders or people who aren't the Beatles, and you run into a situation where you get their perspective and not what actually happened. And so he's uh, smart enough that, you know, he will he will deal with that. He will separate the the good from the bad, you know, he'll, he'll know how to handle that. I'm sorry, go, what were you going to say? Well, yeah, he's, very, he's knowledgeable enough to do that. I brought up the point that there are certain people in the Beatles story that over the years want to elevate their status, is the way that I worded it in the interview. Right. And he right. said that, um, you know, he's aware of that, but he's got to weigh everything, you know, all the facts that, he, that are, are thrown together and uh, make a judgment call. Mm-hmm. So... Um, You know, it's just someone like him has such a deep appreciation for wanting to know everything. You know, he said something to me that I I thought was really interesting, which is that, you know, you you tend to think about all their activities and all that they did. And and not many people concentrate all that much on the period before they became famous. But what could be just as interesting is what they did when they weren't busy. (laughs) Right. When they didn't have gigs in the early years. So that's something that intrigued me when he said that. The great thing about talking to him is that he couldn't really give me too much information about uh, revelations that we'll get in this book when it comes out, because it's still several months away. As we get closer to it, as the book comes out, I'm sure he'll say a lot more. But Mm -hmm. even by not saying all that much, just the fact that he's as knowledgeable as he is, he's a fascinating interview. You know, there are things off the top of his head that he could say that I find really fascinating. And... I'm very lucky that this particular interview that I did was over an hour long, and most of that's going to wind up on my website, which uh, is kenmichaelsradio.com, and maybe by the time this gets posted, uh, most of it will be there. But um, I just find any interview with him fascinating, just the fact that he has this passion. And, And it really, he conveyed it to me so well, that even now, after all these years, after doing so much work, he's, he's more fascinated with the Beatles than he ever has been. And that, that alone tells you how powerful 
the music, their history, their personalities, everything about them is to him and to many of us. So, you know, that impressed me so much about him. Mm -hmm. When you have a conversation with someone and they don't reveal as much as you want, but it's still interesting, it's still a great conversation. Just off the top of his head, some of the things that he says will turn your head. And some of that you'll find in, in my interview with him. I remember uh, contacting him in 2011 when that, um, con that Beatles uh, contract from the Cow Palace show went on uh, auction and it was the one that got a lot of media attention about rejecting segregation. And a lot of the media accounts said, you know, this was just specific for this one tour or this one, yeah, this one tour. And, and, you know, I went to him and I said, did this happen more than on more than one tour? And he came back and told me it did. And, you know, I wrote about that. And that was uh, fascinating that he had that deep information uh, about that. Yeah. And that's the way he is. That's the kind of stuff that he has. You know, that's and that's why this book is going to be so interesting. He told me uh, that the one thing that he likes to find out the most or the, the thing that he collects the most isn't memorabilia. It's more documents of information. Mm -hmm. You know, anything that he can look at that tells you something that's factual about their history, you know, he wants that. He wants to make copies of it. You know, anything that he can find where the proof is right there in writing, that's far more important to him. And that's what he uses in, in, uh, in the work that he does, and certainly in this biography. Mm -hmm. And, and, the, and the, res the research is just being added on to all the time. We were talking before we started today about Ringo's uh, e-book and Ringo, the, the book that will be coming out in, in later in the year. Uh, you know, obviously, that's, there's information in there that will help, will you know, be a part of, uh, you know, uh, at, at some point, you know, be included or adds to the, to the body of knowledge of the Beatles, and it's just happening all the time. Yeah, well, I didn't get to ask him if something if something happens in the process as this has already been published, and he mm -hmm. finds out more information. Can he add more in later editions? Mm -hmm. Will he be able yeah. to do that? Because you're always well, finding out new information all the time, like like you just said with Ringo's book. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, I mean, we don't we have no idea what's going to happen between now and the time when his, you know, when the last volume comes out, but. Uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting, and he's basically concentrating on the Beatle years anyway. So most of that is, you know, is pretty much there. Um, but still, I mean, there's, you know, it's it's going to be it's going to be fun to see what he comes up with, and he and he's promised that there's going to be stuff that we have no idea about, you know. So that's going to be that's going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting. I think I'm going to be devouring this book. <laughs> You and you and everybody. I mean, everybody that. And and it's funny that you know, in in cases like this, people usually say, "Well, you know, I'm going to go for the lesser book." But I swear to God, everybody that has talked to me, right? It seems like everybody that has talked to me about this book and has commented on it says, "I'm going for the for the the big cut," you know, the big version. Right. So uh, that's going to be definitely interesting, and in, you know, as far as. Uh, it's going to be fun to see how many people go for that over the the, um, the smaller version. And he he already told me that it's not going to be limited, so there's not going to be a problem getting it. And that's so 2,000 that, pages, and don't forget, that's only the first volume. <laughs> right. My God. Um, you know, the postage, the postage costs on that are going to be crazy. You know, that's going to be ridiculous. How many, I can't, can't imagine how many pounds that thing's going to weigh. Yeah. It's going to be it's going to be wild but anyway so that's just a little taste of what's to come with mark lewison's book and uh, like i said earlier hopefully when the book comes out we'll be talking to mark again and yep. it'll be great if uh, we had him here for the show i hope so too hope so too so if you would like to get in touch with us our email address is things we said today radio show at gmail.com you can also get in touch with me ken michaels at my email address which is every little thing at att.net. Make sure you check out my website, kenmichaelsradio.com, which by the time you hear this, we'll probably have uh, most of the interview with Mark Lewison. And if people want to get in touch with you, Steve, they can do so. How? 
uh, email beetlesexaminer at gmail.com. I'm also on Facebook and uh, under my name, and also I have a Beatles Examiner page. And we also have an email for the show, email address, things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. I said that already. <laughs> oh, did you? Okay. Yes, that's okay. Say okay. it again. All right. And we also have a Facebook page for Paul McCartney's tour. Yes, I do. Uh, Paul McCartney Tour News 2013. Um, and we're keeping up on, we're getting uh, exclusive reports and things. And if you're going to a show and you, and you want to be uh, quoted of talking about the show, come on to the page and like the page and, and put up your comments and you may get quoted. Yeah. And uh, just so you folks know, since we haven't tackled the subjects yet, we will be doing a show on the Wings Over America box set and also on uh, Paul's concerts. I've already seen him. You're going to see him fairly soon, but we will be doing shows on those, too. Yep. All right. Yep. Well, this sure was a lot of fun. I'm Ken Michaels for Things We Said Today, thanking each and every one of you for listening, and I'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci saying the show went by too quickly. And we'll see you next time.